In today's video, I'll be going over how to create this radial pattern image sampler. Um, I've had that question many times, um, but I want to go over that here and also how to remove the points that we don't need. So I'll be going over that right now. All right, so for this first part, we need to create a radial pattern to put our image sampler on. So typically we use a grid, but since this is not going to be a square grid or anything like that, we're going to be using a circle. We can start by uh, bringing in a point. So we'll go to construct point. Now we can create a circle and this is going to be our first circle. Now let's give it a radius. So let's just say 120. And I'll actually increase this. And I'll make this the overall size. So with this, now let's create the endpoint from the circle, or we can move the point in the x direction. A factor of a thousand. This way we have this point that's moved this way. Now we can join those using line and we can use the start point and the end point to create a line. This line we're going to divide. So we'll divide curve, not distance or length, but we'll use just divide curve. And we can pick a number of divisions. 15, so we have a slider from 0 to 100. We can change the number of points. With this, now let's create some circles starting from the center here out to all of these subdivisions. So uh, to do that, we're going to create a circle. and connect the first point to all of these points. So I'll create a line segment starting at the origin point and ending here. So we should have 18 values. And if I go to item, it's kind of difficult to see them when they're all overlapping. We'll get a list item. Let's change the index to five. And you'll see that we'll have all the different lengths for the circles there. Now we can use that length. And use that as a radius. This is one way of doing it. There's other ways of doing it. You can just create an offset, a series of offsets. That's another way of doing it is creating the first segment and then creating a series of offsets. But what I don't like is that then you can't pick the fixed size of the outside overall shape. So this fixes the size with the slider and we can just subdivide to have more or less divisions in the circle here. Um, I'm sure there's uh, there's other ways of doing this, uh, but as you can see, there are many ways using parametric design to come up with uh, solutions to whatever you're looking to do. So now, let's create the points that are going to create the grid. So let's take all of this, clean it up a little bit. And I'll take all of this and hide it. And I'll take this circle and I'll do divide length or divide distance. So let's try distance. And for distance, if this is a thousand, then we'll just put a distance of 
Now it will make a bunch of points here, so that's probably why it's taking so long. The, lo the bigger the distance, the more space you'll have in between the points, and that will help us create the pattern, or at least the radial uh, points, so we can create the whatever image sampler we can use. Um, we can use it for. So let's see when this will uh, calculate. And if it doesn't work with distance, we can try a different method. So I got I got a result, but it's too large, so I need to change the slider and change that down or to a bigger number. So I'll just delete the slider and bring in 150. And let's try that for the distance. So as you can see, it'll create the start point here and the subdivisions. If we hide the circles, we have a radial pattern that we can change the number of divisions. The lower the number here, you're going to get a better result since you have more points to display the information. So let's go here to 50. Pretty okay. The other way to change the spacing on this is decrease the or increase the number of divisions for the points. So that's another way. It's going here at 45. You'll see that they'll be tighter. And then the distance, well, the thing is that they're all starting from this base point and they end wherever they end. So this result is um, good but it's not as efficient as having it starting in a random point so let's go ahead and bring in the other one which is divide curve but using not distance but length which is the same thing and let's see if it gives us a different result and it gives us a little bit of a different result but nothing drastically different. Um, now with this, let's go ahead and now bring in an image sampler and let's place that image here to see what this looks like. Alright, so what I did was I went ahead and went to Google and found an image that was black and white and this is what I'll use. So once I downloaded it, now I need to place it here. Now when I place the image, it typically puts it in the origin point and goes out this way. And this is about a thousand from here to here. And this is by done by this parameter, a thousand. So this will be 2000 wide. What we can do is create a rectangle here. That's 2000 by 2000. So let's do that. Create a rectangle. Two points. No, let's go here to rectangle. X and Y, we'll say 2000. X and Y. Yeah. Now, that rectangle, let's bring in that area component. And now, let's place the circle here. How do we do that? There's two different ways. We know that the whole thing is created from this initial point. I'll actually double click on here to create a relay and I'll plug in from that this output it going into start point and this will also be the point. Now what I'll do is I'll change this point from being the point that's generated using construct point, we'll just use the centroid. Oh, 
the reason why it's not working is because this plane here, this input, has to be used with this one. So let's do, bring this back. It's just showing you a little bit of troubleshooting. Yep. Now we can do this. We can take this output and plug it right into this plane. Right? So now that center point is relative to this center from this rectangle. So now if we change, oh, also, this is 2,000, this is 1,000. So if we do divide by 2, we can just use the rectangle size for the size of our image. And for the size, basically, of the spacing of the pattern also. So with this, now we can bring in a image sampler. We'll make it, the size will be 2000. So let's do that. Let's go to image sampler. We can also drag and drop. <clears throat> so I'll double click on here. We'll go to black and white and interpolate. And for domain, we'll do 0 to 2000. And Y domain, 0 to 2000. And the path will be the location of the image. So let's go into Now I'll hit OK. Now using all of these points, we'll plug this into our input here. We'll have to make sure that we flatten the input. And now we can use this pattern to um, and use this image sampler to start removing the black and white points so we could display the image sampler in using this grid. So the values that we have coming out of this um, component, let's go here and create um, a panel. So I'll just go to rotation mark and let's plug this one in here. Now you'll see that we have a list of values ranging from zero and less than zero. So let's create some circles using these points as the input for the plane. And the radius will be determined by the output of As you can see, we have something working here, but it's not big enough. Um, the radius are really, really small here. So let's change those values. And to do that, I'll bring in remap numbers, which will allow us to take those numbers and make them bigger or smaller. When we bring in uh, remap numbers, we do have to bring in bounds and construct domain. We'll plug both of these in here. The values will come out from this one into the numbers and from here into the values. Now I have a video where I go over how to remap numbers, but this is the typical configuration. Now the domain start, let's go, uh, you know, zero, say 1.5. And I'll copy this down here. And I don't, oh, I never really go to zero. I typically just go to a low number and a large number. We can always change those around. <clears throat> okay, so now let's take the values. If we take a look with a panel, the values before we map, remap them. And now after we remap them, the first number is eight. And for this one, the first number is zero. So we see that the numbers are way larger. And as you can see, now we're getting the image, but it's backwards. The light part is here, and the dark side is on the other side. This is where we can switch. Of course, we also have all of these points that look really ugly, so let's get rid of those. And let's add more points so we can. First of all, lower these values and increase the point count to increase the quality. So 
So let's go to account. You can increase account. Now we've made them too spread out, so we need to decrease the length. And the maximum number is a thousand. I'll change that down to like 200. This way we can have a little bit more, a little bit more subtle about that. So we'll do 50. As you can see, now we have the image sampler working. But what typically will happen is this image here, this part of the image, has a bunch of little dots and it's kind of defeats the purpose and the fact that is that we want to remove those uh, clear ones, the ones that look really white, or basically when we look at the image sampler, the white ones remove and keep the black ones. So let's do that. What we need to do now is take this list of points and remove those. So what we're going to do is do a mathematical uh, less than, and that will allow us to remove the points. So we'll go over that right now. All right, <clears throat> the next portion, let's remove those points. So first component we'll bring in is we'll go to math, and then we'll go to larger than. Now we can, of course, use this output or just use this output. Now the second number, this is important. Second number, I'll just copy this slider and just lower it a little bit here. And so anything, you'll see. First thing we'll do is now, now that we have these larger than numbers, so it's a true false, true false, this will now pull the pattern. So we have this list, larger than, and this is going to be the cold pattern. And the list is going to be the points because we want to remove the points that are using the image sampler smaller than three. So let's now go to this, uh, the circles that we had, disable preview. Now let's look at this pattern. This is the same pattern as this one, but this one has all of them. This one has them removed. So this becomes a cutoff point to give and remove more detail. So like you can see here, it's a little bit more subtle. You can also go something like this. Now we can also just take these circles and put them, put these points into the circle, but the radius won't work correctly. You'll see here. So for the radius, we just have to plug in one value. So I'll just say one point. Because <clears throat> technically we haven't culled the pattern, but this is another cool like little effect that you can create, it's like a half tone effect, uh, where the white is on this side, the black's on this side. I think that's kind of cool. Um, some artistic effects. But we can also call the pattern of the remapped numbers. So as the same way that I did it to the points, I can also do that to these numbers. So I'll take those map numbers and I'll copy this up. I'll take the map numbers, plug them in here. And this is going to remove with using true and false the smaller numbers and this list can now be plugged in here it can be a little bit more subtle in the sense that here now we can pick our small numbers of being very very small and these being little. So this is perfect if you're doing like CNC laser cutting, things like that. You don't have to do a bunch of like, you won't see the machine going to a bunch of these little circles. Uh, you'll just have it going here. But 
the one that I get all the time is I turn this into Voronoi. Well, we can do that simply by just removing the circle. So I'll just disable preview. And now let's use the Voronoi 2D. But in the and just give me a second, I'm going to save. This way I don't lose all the stuff. Okay, so let's take the we don't necessarily need the values here. We need these points. Plug those into the Voronoi 2D. So let's go to vector or it's mesh. Triangulation, Voronoi. We can use this one. And let's just plug in the points. The these down here. And let's plug those in. So this is what you would get. Now, of course, um, it's not going to be as detailed. And this is actually the cutoff point. So this is actually. So here's the thing, the bigger the value here, you also have the ability to be also subtle this way. So we can create this now. The only thing is we don't have the other pattern to put on it. So there's that, like the other side, if we just added even If I were to take the original circle and create random points within that, if I went to vector, populate geometry, and let's do boundary surface and plug that into the geometry. Now let's plug in this additional to that. So holding down shift, adding the points and flattening the points. This way, um, it adds like another side here. Just thinking out loud as to other ways to make it so it's not just white here. So there's like a bit of a pattern or something. Now those will get in the way with this. So there's a way to remove those points too, but using a subtraction the other way. But for the most part, the idea was to get the pattern and this way is the most efficient way of doing it now if you have any questions make sure to let me know i will also link the video that i made before this one that it was uh, showing the process of creating two different patterns and that could be applied to this as well so thank you for watching and um, i hope to see you next time if you have any questions or any other ideas let me know if you want to get in contact with me Check out my website, cotettydavid.com. There you can find a way to contact me. Also courses and scripts for Rhino and Grasshopper. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.